If you have small children, you might be familiar with True and the Rainbow Kingdom on Netflix. My daughter wanted to be True for Halloween, so we bought her a costume, which came with True's backpack as a plush pillow kind of thing, and I thought we could definitely do something cooler than this. I built this pretty quickly, just in time for Halloween here, so I didn't film every step along the way, but here's the highlights. Some basic requirements. I wanted the front and back packs to light up with different colors. I thought it would be cool if it played some sound clips from True, especially her catchphrases. And I wanted the front buttons to actually function and be real push buttons that would kick off light and sound effects. So I figured I'd need an Arduino Nano, six individual Neo pixels, not the strips, the individual LEDs, three push buttons, and I'm gonna use a DF mini player with a speaker, very small SD card for the sound. Also need some ribbon cable to make the connections from the front pack that will go up around the shoulder to the back pack to make the connections to the actual Nano itself. The ribbon cable also lets me keep all the wires together nice and flat because they go through the shoulder strap that actually holds it on her body. Then I spent a couple hours modeling the parts for the backpack and the front pack in SolidWorks. I kept the backpack as individual pieces so that I could paint them and glue it all together later. I'm doing this pretty quickly and I only have a spool of teal and natural semi-transparent PLA, so parts will have to be painted. I also had to size the backpack to my daughter. She's only three and she's pretty small, so it couldn't be very wide or it would be bigger than her body, while at the same time, I needed enough space to cram the electronics and the batteries in. The half circles in the backpack and the front pack case itself are printed in the natural PLA, which is semi-transparent, and they'll have the NeoPixels behind them, which will allow the light to show through pretty brightly, but it's not totally clear, so it works well to hide all the electronics. The front pack was designed to be a very specific height with recesses for the buttons that would allow me to print half-sphere button tops with a flat lip that could be glued directly to the top of small momentary push buttons so that when it's assembled, the button tops can't shift around or fall out of position, but they use the mechanics of the push button itself below it for its springiness that gives the printed button top that nice clicky kind of feel without having to go crazy. But the height of the front pack had to be pretty exact so that there was enough play for the button to be able to press and pop itself back up into place without being too tight or too loose. After soldering all the wiring together for the front pack, the buttons and the Neo pixels were hot glued directly to the bottom plate cover and everything was positioned so that it would line up correctly with the top cover once it's all assembled. There's also a notch cut out for the ribbon cable to come through as it acts as the shoulder strap. In my original design, I had the cutout in the wrong spot on the back plate, so I just used a Dremel to notch in a hole in the right spot so that it would sit on the right angle. So here's the wiring diagram for the electronics. The front pack contains three push buttons with a common ground that will be active low in the code. The front pack NeoPixels are wired up as their own string of Neo pixels, it will be separate from the backpack set. The backpack itself will house the Nano, the DF player with the speaker, two battery trays for AA batteries, and its own string of three Neo pixels. Neo pixels in the backpack are glued down to cut popsicle sticks, and then that's glued across the hole uh, for the opening for the orbs so that the light will be able to shine through. The speaker, the battery packs are also just hot glued down into the case but I kept the Nano and the DF player loose so that I can pull them up to reprogram them if I need to, and just put some electrical tape around them to keep pins from shorting out if they shift around. And then, of course, when I put everything together, I realized I never made an opening for the power switch. And at this point, I just needed to get it done, so I just drilled a couple holes in the side to make an opening for the switch to stick through that I can flip on and off. The code is pretty straightforward. There's two strings of Neo pixels that will rotate through a rainbow color changing sequence forever. And built into that loop, it checks to see if any of the three buttons are pressed. No need to use interrupts here, just keeping it simple. So when it recognizes a button is pressed, it will flip over to playing a sound clip 
and then change the NeoPixel strings to be a rotating chase effect using the color of the button that was pressed. Each of the sound clips are about 20 seconds long, so the chase effect is about 20 seconds as well, and it's blocking code. And that was done on purpose to act as both a button debounce and prevent a three-year-old from just hammering the buttons or holding it down. So this gives enough time for the MP3 to actually play itself fully while the chase effect is going on and prevent what would appear to be like skipping with the mp3. Without this, if you held the button down or if you pressed it repeatedly, the mp3 would just keep starting over and over and over again. So it kind of makes it a little kid safe. The blue button always plays the same catchphrase, so does the yellow, but the red button will just randomly choose a number and select one of the remaining sound clips on the DF player. And then finally, a couple of screws drilled in to keep everything together and make sure the back plates don't fall off while she's walking around trick-or-treating. Some cheap glitter-covered Dollar Tree lacy kind of fabric wrapped around the wiring to act as the actual straps. A little bit of Velcro, and it's done. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and like this video if you found it interesting. And we'll see you in the next project.